The Turner Prize is one of the most controversial and prestigious prizes of the contemporary art world. Four artists have the privilege of being shortlisted for this year's prize, but is there already a clear frontrunner? We asked Joseph Hayat to find out. Since its inception in 1984, the Turner Prize has established itself as the UK's most renowned and respected visual arts award. The prize was named after 19th century artist J.M.W. Turner, whose works the curators deem both innovative and controversial. Every alternate year, the prize is staged outside London, and this year it is hosted by the Ferenc Art Gallery in Hull, which is the UK's 2017 City of Culture. It's a massive honour for, for us to have the Turner Prize coming to the Ferenc Art Gallery. Um, it's never happened before and it may never happen again, so it's a really important moment in the gallery's history and something that we're really excited about and really going to celebrate. Each year, the four shortlisted artists are granted the opportunity to exhibit their works for just over three months before the winner is selected by the Turner Prize jury. This year's finalists each are showing very unique pieces from across varying disciplines of visual art. German woodblock artist Andrea Buckner's works are inspired by the themes of poverty and humility. Hervin Anderson presents vibrant large-scale paintings which draw upon his own political and social context. Lubaina Hamid's works look at the representation of black, Asian and minority ethnic culture. While Rosalind Neshashibi's exhibits consist of two evocative 16-minute long films, one filmed in Gaza, the other in Guatemala. But is there a clear winner in sight? I couldn't tell you, but I, I would also say that I think it's a very, very strong year. And, uh, and I think each of the artists are, you know, I, I, let, let's say if I was a betting man and I was not the chair, I'd find it very difficult this year to tell who would win. And I think that makes for a very exciting turn of price. Over the last 30 years, there has at times been occasional controversy surrounding the Turner Prize. There have been dramatic acts of opposition. For example, in 2002, Kim Howells, the then Culture Minister of Britain, pinned up an abusive note to the exhibition in opposition to particular featured works. Some critics are against the fact that the prize is only open to artists born, living or working in Britain. This year was the first time the award was open to applicants aged over 50 years old. There are two artists over 50 in this year's shortlist and I think what it reveals is that there are so many artists now of an older age whose work is being shown in very contemporary contexts and being discussed in very current critical contexts and are being looked at by younger artists. It's often said in the world of arts and media that there's no such thing as bad press and the diversity of this year's artists and their exhibits represents a mere indicator of the prize's continued growth and success. Joseph Hyatt, TRT World. Now to talk more about this year's prize, I'm joined by Turner Prize curator Sasha Craddock. Sasha, thanks for joining us. Now this was the year the Turner Prize removed the much debated age barrier um, allowing artists over the age of 50 to submit their work. Why was this change made? I think the change was made because it's understood that, uh, that people of different ages are making pretty amazing work. It was extended perhaps also to change the emphasis on youth that, which has characterized the relationship to British art, particularly in the 90s. Um, there are good things about this. There are also perhaps problems or possibilities in that the Turner Prize must not become a prize for, you know, the most respected or uh, it can't be a sort of honorary prize. It has to be about really active and contemporary work. But obviously the shortlist represents that very strongly. Now, in the past, the prize has been criticized for failing to engage in current affairs and being apolitical. Do you think this year, with this year's crop of cross-cultural shortlisted artists, uh, you can make a strong political statement, especially considering the current global immigrant crisis as well as the rise of nationalism? I think it, it's incredibly important to, um, to understand or reflect the fact that artists, in some way or another, deal with the world as it is. Um, I don't really remember those criticisms of the Turner Prize of the past in that perhaps it's a normal criticism of art being separate from society. But in fact, this selection of artists um, is very fascinating and some of the work is more 
obviously or blatantly or patently commenting on the world and others are more subtle. But um, there is a sort of, as they put it, a diverse range of artists, uh, a need in this country and everywhere else to in a way reflect on internationalism, need for movement, the problems for people at work in different countries and so on. So at a more general political sense, there are all those questions are answered. At a more artistic level, it's very boring to think that all art has to make statements that are very blatant. Now, none of the four finalists have UK-born parents. How significant is that? I know they talk a lot about otherness. Uh, so what is your thought on the significance of uh, where your shortlisted, shortlisted artists come from? Well, obviously, uh, uh, Britain, it ha uh, I'm not being uh, jingoistic, but we have fantastic relationship to art education in this country. So people have come historically uh, to uh, Britain to study art and then have stayed on in a kind of multicultural or relaxed environment. And so in a way, you could, you could look at someone like Hervin Anderson and say his parents are born in Jamaica, but he was born in Birmingham and he's very much a British artist. So it just, this range of people reflects the fact that this country is full of people from everywhere, and I hope long may it continue in that way. You mentioned Hervin Anderson. His piece is called, Is It Okay to Be Black? That's a very bold, powerful question. Is that the type of dialogue or um, conversation starter you hope to be synonymous with the Turner Prize? No, in a way, that is a one of painting by, of his, which is, uh, the point about Hervin Anderson is that he deals with a sense of place, creating a sense of place and questioning the relationship between places he's seen and places he knows. I mean, that's a very bold statement and it's, uh, it doesn't necessarily reflect the titles or the subject in a very literal way of the other paintings. But Labena Himid, who's an incredibly um, strong artist, has always directed her work on the question of the representation of black people and also supporting female black artists and she's worked as a curator as well as an educator in that respect for many years. Now last year's winning piece by Helen Martin was criticized for being apolitical. Do you think art should carry the burden of having to be political or does that you know compromise the authenticity of, of the artist's vision? I think that we should all be sensible about what art can or can't do. And the idea that art should, in a way, be literally reflective of our political needs is kind of boring. We would be bored stiff if art was like that. Helen Martin, I don't remember that being a particular criticism. Um, the work is quite formal. A lot of the artists uh, this year are, in a, way, in a way, formally very clear in terms of what they present. But, you know, our need for art is immense, and it's also immense that we should...